Okay, so we're going to continue through NCCER Millwright Level 2, Module 6, Rigging, starting here at Section 3. Section 3.0.0 talks about slings. Most common types of slings include the wire rope sling, which we talked about in the core, synthetic slings, and again, that does that depends on which one you're talking about, whether it's the web sling eye to eye or the continuous or round sling. So again, they don't get into detail there, but either one of those would count as synthetic. They bring up another one, and that's the metal mesh sling. I have an example of it here. It has the attachments, and it's made of metal, so the metal mesh is this one. And then, of course, they talk about the chains. Something similar to this. So, I'm going to get into detail of each of them first, or a little more in a little bit, but the advantage of the metal mesh sling, first they talk about it. It is for abrasive, hot, or other types of slings that would tend to get cut if they used them. So this will wrap around a sharp object and not get damaged. This has an eye on it. It goes right through there and it can choke it. We can basket it. We can do a vertical hitch in a straight up and down manner. Um, one of the other things, big things about it, it can withstand temperatures up to 550 degrees. So it puts it in line with our chains in temperature. So that's one of the biggest advantages. It'll conform to irregular shapes, it doesn't kink or tangle, and it does resist corrosion. So some of them have different coatings on them, things like that. Sling capacity, section 3.1.0. They talk about the sling capacity depends on the material, the construction, the size of the hitch configuration, the quantity, and the angle for specific type of sling being used. So real quickly there, construction. Depends on which type of sling we just talked about. Some are going to be rated for more, some are going to be rated for less. Um, construction, again, similar to what we just said, same as what we said. They're going to be de determined by what kind of construction, how thick they are. You know, web slings can, eye to eye slings can be a lot wider than this. They can be even narrower than this. That's going to calculate in. Wire rope slings can be lot larger in size than these you know this is a quarter inch so they go way up from there um, next one is going to be the hitch that could be like I said earlier either the vertical hitch which is straight up and down the basket hitch which make basically makes a loop around it now we have two vertical hitches and then the choke hitch and again a lot of times they they're gonna suggest nowadays to put a shackle to connect so you don't go through there, but we're going to connect it like that for the basket. On the tag, it's going to have all three of those configurations and what they're rated for. So that's kind of made a lot of this stuff in, not a lot of it, but you get, you can look right on the tag and find this information out. Um, then the last thing is the angle. Again, we everything is rated for that straight up and down or that basket that's straight up and down, or that choke that goes around it like that, straight up and down. When we start getting off into angles, then we start changing the capacity. And that picture starts on figure 16 down on the bottom of page 10, so I want you to look at that a little bit. But we will go back through and do some questions based off of that through here also. Um, table one there, gives you some examples of wire rope sling capacity based off of size, which hitch you're using, what angle you're using, and the eye dimensions. What they're talking about with the eye dimensions is this opening. So, um, follow, flipping forward to page 12, 3.1.1, here is where you're going to do the calculations to figure out what your sling angle is and what you're talking about for added weight. In the example they give, the figure down on page figure 16, they have a 2,000 pound load. Well, they have two slings going down to it. 
They only show the one side of ankles. They don't show both sides. So if we had two slings going down to a 2,000 pound load, we're gonna be lifting 1,000 pounds with each one. Okay, 2,000 divided by two. Now, when we change that angle, and they talk about using table two there, the sling factor angle, when they're talking the angle, they're talking about the distance, the angle be, that's formed between the two slings coming down. So if we started at zero degree or 90 degree angles, we would be lifting 1,000 pounds each one. If we went to 85, which would be 10 degrees between the two, five degrees this way, five degrees that way, or I'm sorry, two and a half degrees, two and a half degrees, that would be there. So now when we go all the way out to their example, they use the 45 degree angle. We'd have two chokers coming down at a 45, or we'd have the slings coming down 145, 145 over here. In between there, I'm just going to make it look like a basket. In between there, that's going to be a 90 degree angle. We add the 45 from this side to the 45 from that side. That's how they're doing their calculations of the angle inside there. Then we would take the 2,000 pounds, again, divided by two, the 1,000 pounds each, and times it by that uh, sling factor table for 45 degrees, which would be 1.414. So 1,000 times 1.414 would be 1,414 pounds. The plate still weighs 2,000 pounds, but each sling is picking up an ad, not an added weight, but the weight changes because we're at an angle and it's picking up, it's, re, it's realistically stressing it to 1,400 pounds. So we have to know that when we go back to our tag on the slings to make sure that we can lift that amount. Well, in this case, the vertical is 6,400 on here. So we're at 1,400 pounds with two of them. We're in good shape. Or if we used it as a basket at 245s, that basket capacity is 12,800. So we're good here in this situation. But as we get into heavier and heavier loads, that's when it changes. And that's where we really have to be careful and understand the sling angles that are being created here. The bottom part of that gets into the D to D ratio in section 3.1. Now that only deals with wire rope slings. And what they're talking about is the diameter of what we're going around and the diameter of the rope. The first diameter is, okay, so their picture there on page 18, or on page 13, figure 18, they're wrapping it around a 20-inch pipe, okay? Well, our D to D ratio is going to be fine in a 20-inch pipe because that's a huge thing. What you really need to take, calculate is small items. We'll say we have a 1-inch pipe or a 2-inch pipe, and we're wrapped around there in something, in a configuration something like this or even smaller. Now... If we're using a big sling, the more bending we do around there and the closer, the smaller that is, the more wear, the more damage we do to the individual strands here. So this D to D ratio is something we calculate based off of the chart there on figure, figure 18, which we take the diameter of what we're doing and their example is they took the diameter of the 20 inch pipe by a one inch wire rope. So our ratio is 20 to one. And we would be at, going across the bottom there would be the D to D ratio. It's somewhere between 18 and 22. We would be at 92, 93% efficient. So we would take that 92, 93% efficiency times the uh, overall rating the tag rating of our sling, and that would be what we could lift. Now again, when that gets smaller, as you see, if we go to the left side of that table, that efficiency goes way down. So if we use the example of a two inch pipe, or a one inch pipe even, a one inch pipe, we're using a half inch cable, one is twice the size of a half inch, so it would be two to one, and we would go up to, 
Oh, probably 66, 67 percent efficiency. We would take that 66, 67 percent, whatever, times the rating on the cable on the sling, and that's what we could lift with it. And that's where people run into problems because they don't understand these the sling angles and they don't understand that ratio when we're lifting small things and how it reduces the capacity of our slings where it adds more stress to the sling because the weight doesn't change, but the amount of stress put on the sling changes because of angles and because of going around small surfaces. So that explains the angles. We'll continue on later with some more.